Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining. If you can join tonight, if not, I'm sure you'll be watching it tomorrow. There's a few of you out there who like to come and have a chat, and hopefully you'll get to see some other heads in coming days and weeks. Um, welcome to the first viewer who's joined. Come say hello, ask your questions. You'll see the team, the first, uh, the 22 players named. I know it goes to 23, but we don't have an 18th man because that's reserved for fans. If you were always wondering about that. Um, hey, gone, Dave. Good to see you, mate. Um, anyway, can we beat the Roosters? It's going to be very, very difficult. I think... Um, Regardless of who the halfback is or who, who plays where, it's going to be a pretty tough game. Um, there's going to be some rain around. The last few meetings have been very close. We've won one. They've won two. We should have won last year, no doubt about that. Um, thanks, Dave. Really appreciate that, mate. I do my best. We're not the most professional outfit, but we just, um, you know, I try to play devil's advocate a lot of the time. When I sit there and watch the game by myself, um, I can be as critical and nasty as uh, some of our fans can be, but I just don't think it does. It's we, we just don't need to show families of players and that sort of stuff um, our baddest traits. But I am a bit of a sook. If you watched me on, la I think, last Friday after the game, I did a live and I was absolutely beside myself <laughs> as many of us were i'm sure but um the changes that came through we had as i predicted and many would have predicted as well whether they wanted that to happen or not probably knew in their heart that wilson was only going to be the only change and um, they've brought into the side harrison edwards and also katani katoga now, on the reserves bench, Bronson Cherry's there with Toby Sexton. Bailey Haywood has been named as the, you know, the backup hooker. And you've got Chris Patolo and Pawasa Farmasili. Now, the interesting thing is, if we look straight ahead at the um, Bulldogs versus Roosters New South Wales Cup game, Hopefully you can all see that. We have Joash Papali, Gerald Skelton, Hayes Perham, Bronson Cherry, Eli Clark, Joey O'Neill into the six. Uh, he's been doing very, very well, having a very good season. Toby Sexton at seven. Jack Todd starting with Bailey Biondiotto into the hooker. And I don't mind that for Bailey. I think um, he tack he's got a really good high tackle rate in the middle of the field. He gets down low. Puts the shoulders in. He, he might be short, but he's definitely not small. Lipoy Hopoy, much preferred in the middle than, than coming off an edge. And young Lachlan Vale and Harry Hayes give us a very mobile um, back row. With Bailey Haywood going into that small lock position. And he's done well to, um, he's brought a lot more starch to his defence this season. And that was the, where he had to step up. And it looks like he's done that. Coloured Rajab named in the 14 for his debut in New South Wales Cup this week. Reese Hoffman, Zane Tedavano, and young hooker Romano Cook, who I don't know much about, come from South Sydney, I think, and um, has played, might have played some Ron Massey Cup, but we can look at all that. Now, it's a, a team, obviously, the Roosters have a couple of sides, um, or they used to. Um, but they haven't named everyone here. I think um, Billy Smith is out again with another injury. But Harry McKeon, Lewis Murphy, Ethan Clark Wood. They've got Power on the other wing. Zach Docker Clay, who's a very good little player. Hugo Savala, Dylan Napper. And yeah, Sia Wong at lock, very good player. And there's the rest. Now, while there's a lot of players, you look at this team, and Dylan Napper's in it. Look at this side that's basically a Jersey flag sort of age side, apart from about three players. Um, but don't be fooled. Like, 
whether they're coming higher or high or low on the ladder, there's some very talented kids in that side who um, played in that grand final against Canterbury last year in the Jersey Fleet. It's probably a good thing about our side as well is that you look at this um, you look at this forward pack, it's pretty much a Jersey flag pack or fresh out of flag. Um, and we'll know that we're in a good position when we've got more youngsters in that team because that's where it's at. You look at Penrith and you look at these good sides, there's all these youngsters that you don't hear much about. They, they come into the Reggies and they play above above their weight, above their age group, um, and they get ready for NRL from a young age where we have way too many players that are, you know, fringe first graders and that sort of thing playing in our New South Wales Cup teams for the last few years. But that's improving, and that's a good benchmark to see how we're getting more depth through our juniors. So there we go. I went on to the New South Wales Cup pretty quick. Um, but there's a chance that Chris Patolo or even Pawasa Farm Silly could play NRL this week. They're not named in that New South Wales Cup side. Um, so we may see a couple of changes to that forward pack. Seems a very light starting pack for me for New South Wales Cup. So I think they may be, a, you know, if they're going to go back into that side, it's probably going to be, you know, a couple of those play other players are going to drop out. I'm not sure who, but we will see. G'day, Paulie. If it's wet, that evens it up. The contest, in my opinion, we can certainly win in the wet. I, I think the mobility of our pack is something... Um, that's definitely going to help. Obviously, losing Preston doesn't help in that area and Moran, but they've replaced them with the likes of, um, you know, Harry Edwards. So, look, I don't think Sam Hughes will start. Let's go through the sides. I think they've named a, their back line is pretty much their best, their best back seven that they can have at the moment. And then you've got Jared, Brandon, and Lindsay, which is just a fantastic front row. Nat Butcher and Angus Crichton's actually started to hit his straps. And with Butcher, Crichton, Radley, you've got toughness, you've got mobility, you've got good skill. And then they come, then they show their bench. Tupanua, Terrell, May, Nafahu, White and Connor Watson, there's just not a weak link in that side. Like, that's a – to me, that team is the challenger for, for the premiership. And one thing I liked about them last week, even though everyone thought that they would have won without Cleary playing for Penrith, like, I fucking hate the Roosters, don't get me wrong. You know, I'll, I'd back Penrith over the Roosters any day. The Roosters, um, you know – Broncos, Roosters, Souths, Eels, Manly. Can't stand them. <laughs> anyway. Don't like the Dragons either. Just quietly. But um, I think that, yeah, this side here, the fact that it sort of didn't get blown away in that second half, um, and just kept on fighting. They should have had that first try that was disallowed. Um, and they weren't too far from the end. If they had a chance late to get something happening. So, yeah, they're a tough team. But in the wet, I think we look at our own side. Look, I don't think Sam Hughes will start. I just think um, they might go with, with one of these boys, Liam. Um, and maybe Pawasa or Chris gets elevated. It's it's rare though for this for the last reserve to get elevated unless they're like the star, a star player that they're not sure about, like like the Fox. Normally the pecking orders, Bronson replaces is the first one there because he's the one who deserves 
to be the next man up. So he's like your 18th man, and he can be the 18th man, and then on Saturday play play for, uh, play in at New South Wales Club. Toby's there is to, to replace if there's an injury to Hutchison. And then you've got Bailey, who comes in if there's an injury to Marnie. Patolo comes in as the next man up for the forwards. That's normally how they do it. Nine times out of ten, it just it's just clockwork. That's how they name the side. Is Poasa one that they bring up? I'm not sure. Harrison Edwards, normally I'd be like, yep, perfect guy to bring in. It's pretty much how I thought it would go down. Wasn't sure if Liam Knight would retain his spot or not. Um, but this is pretty much the side I thought they would pick. Um, but Harrison, he's a little bit underdone in my opinion um, from what I've watched. But every you know every game is gold for him and he's not going to let you down through effort. But he's a player that's definitely a lot better after he's had a few games under his belt, as, as they all are. It's just facts. Um, Max King, Margot's man of the match last week, absolute brilliant. And that back line is full of talent, full of skill. And to, it, it's all going to come down to how we control their back three. It, you know, we have to make sure that we can kick deep Kick deep for Dominic Young. You, you, you saw how effectively Penrith did that. They just followed the process. But they've got the forwards to get them into that position to do that. If Dom Young's catching the ball and 10 or 15 out, but he's got 20 metres to run before we're getting there because we're relying on Burton's boot to get us down the field, which we do a lot of the time. Um, it's He is just a player with the effort he gives and the way he winds up. He's going to start their sets off real well. And then Tupu is exactly, exactly the same. Teddy's going to run on tackle four. And then this guy stays fresh and pops up, does the hard carries as well. Manu floats and does whatever he wants to do. And then these walkers, just these um, walkers, these halves, I should say, they take care of the rest off that platform. So let's see what people are saying. Bronson is looking sharp in reserves. Sure is, mate. He sure is. And that's why he um, um, gets to do what he wants to do. Um, sorry, I just read something and <laughs> went off track. G'day, Pele. How you going, mate? I love it too, buddy. Interesting that he's playing with number four on his back. Um, who's that? Um, Bronson Cherry. Yeah, well, he's playing left. See, in, at the Bulldogs, number four is the left edge. It used to be that the left edge used to be two and three, but now it's four and five for some reason. Um. Yeah, so at the Bulldogs, we have four and five as our left edge and two and three as our right edge. But for a lot of other teams, it's the opposite. And it used to be the opposite for us. Like Josh Morris was on the left, he used to always be number three. So I don't freaking know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's playing left. He's ready to come in on the left. Um, let's look at it. So, yeah, I don't think there's going to be any changes to this back line. I went and watched the Souths game for the fourth time again and tortured myself. Um, you know, we got marched up the field. Let's talk about that without the emotion before we move on to this Roosters game and, and how we can pick them apart. Um the issue with the South game was it was it was a stop start affair. That is never conducive to flowing football, as everyone should know. We got, you know, eleven penalties, which is probably the most we've ever got. And we got a couple late in the tackle as well, which was great. You know, Sutton 
blew the whistle when he should have a lot of times. Um, we suffered suffered four head high tackles against South Sydney. All were cool. I'm hoping for a victory too, mate. So much. Maybe your boy needs to come in. <laughs> you know, I've been saying let's let's hold him back. But you know, Blake Taft's doing a pretty good job. And uh, it's it's good seeing him open his mouth and, and control things at the back, which people aren't taking into account and want to move him to halfback. But um, he can do the job there, but you've got to ask why hasn't he been the halfback at South Sydney? Like, to me, he's a, he can kick just as good as Dean Hawkins. His short kicking came just as good. Um, probably, you know, his cover defence is as good, good as Dean Hawkins. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's because he just struggles to defend in the in the on the on an edge for 80 minutes. In fact, that's the reason why he hasn't been seven. Has been the backup fullback for about three years at, at South Sydney, and comes in as a flamboyant, creative, speedy extra half for the defence. So. For us, um, it was great seeing Blake Taft do that little, you know, steps inside, gets the beautiful ball from Hutchison, which gets forgotten about. He then the, the defence is drawn out. Taft uses his manoeuvrability, beautiful kick to Tracy. Tracy scores in the corner. Burton converts and we go up 12-10. Um, hoping the cup will get... Better together this weekend at Belmore. Well, I think they they've got that cohesion in the in the back line. I think Jordan, uh, I think Joey O'Neill is going to be a big help. Um, not saying anything about Bailey. I felt Bailey did some good things in what I've watched. So Bailey beyond Yodo, that is. But um, yeah, Joey O'Neill, I think I think they're sharpening the pencil to give him a pretty good contract. I'd hope so. But anyway, um, and I'm hoping that for Joe Ash as well. I'm hoping they, you know, show me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> um, yeah, so get, I keep getting off track. Sorry about that. So young Blake Taffy's always had that extra half ability as, a, as an attacking fullback, and that helps us because – Hutchison, while he knows where he wants to go and what he wants to do, there is that, you know, when he's getting slow ball out of dummy half, which, and there's no punch from the play the ball. You know, Liam Knight will get away a quick play the ball, but he, and he's getting to, like, they're trying to do things to get away these quick play the balls, but too often they're slow across the team. And when we were marched up with 11 penalties and starting our second set, you know, in their 20 metre line. It was just dad's army stuff. Marnie's pushing across field to try and get something happening because the play the ball just took six seconds. It's um they're going back, one way back, the other, setting it, trying to set it up, set it up. Both halves are touching the ball. And Marnie's got his pin print all over it, but it's just all too slow. Slow from the locks as well. Slow, you know, that it, you watch it all the time, and and you know I've spoken to a few players, and some of them actually they're they're especially forwards. They don't mind tackling on their own line, um, because they can have less distance to run back. You know what I mean? Sometimes, and you can attack with your defence really well and put teams under pressure. And then and then when they don't score and they knock it on, um, so many Souths didn't do it to us, but so many teams after they've and you've seen that with our team for years where we haven't been able to score, whether it was Lachlan Lewis or Cogger or, or Foran or whoever it fucking was. Even going back to Reynolds and, and um, Hodgkinson, like what have we won four games by one point and, less, and scored less than three tries in all of them? You know, you, we've seen that where we can't score and then the opposition get one chance and go and go, they get confident from their defence and then go, 80 metres and score. Took me a while to get that out. <laughs> yeah. 
Anyway, um, how are we going to beat the Roosters? Well, many people say we can't because Drew Hutchison's still in the team, and I think it's absolutely ridiculous. But in saying that, um, you know, we are all seeing things that we want him to improve on, and I think and I think he would know that drums are beating. I think we will see some change before the second half of the season. Um, from what I'm seeing in New South Wales Cup, there's obviously no communication in the defence. You can see, you can see um, there's an animated little guy at the back. You're not that little anymore, who's definitely um, shouting and, and trying to and making a lot of noise. And at certain times, there's people talking and making noise. Perham's always making noise, but unfortunately, um, there's not enough leadership um, coming probably from their halves in the New South Wales Cup. You could make that, you know, and you could say the same thing about NRL. There's not enough, there obviously isn't enough leadership coming from Burton and Hutchison, um, especially in attack. But in defence, I'd say they're communicating pretty well. I'd say Stephen Crichton on that edge is communicating pretty well. <laughs> you know, the communication in defence is obviously there because they're working as a unit. They're currently top eight in, in their defence, which we haven't been in that position for a very long time. I don't know how long it's been since um, after four rounds we've been about seventh. Um, but it could, you know, if we keep losing games and we get frustrated and lose confidence, get a couple of injuries like we've got, that's when the floodgates start to open. And even though it's wet, if we don't turn up with a great attitude, if those players that get their opportunity this week don't take it, if the players that are there that have been doing well week in, week out with their efforts in attack and defence don't do it, you know, they could cop a flogging in the wet as well. The Roosters look to me like a team that is going to build nicely into this season and they've been a simmering sort of side for the last three years that have, you know, had the teams on paper but just haven't been able to get there, had a lot of injuries. Um, got some new recruits in the right areas. Again, have done that with Spencer Lenu and Dom Young. So they've got the team, but do they have what it takes to put it all together as that team? You would think with those young halves, we'd think with Brandon Smith. Um, well, Luke here is not young. He's your experience, and Sam Walker's now got more experience. you think with that development, Brandon Smith's been there for a year. I just can't see any, you know, if this game's played 100 times, I only see the dogs winning it five or six times. But sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes that's all you need. I, I, there's, there's some guys out there, Katoga, who, look, I think his, his discipline was bad against Newtown. Um, but he, he, he can put on a nice hit. Um, he can break a tackle, he can throw an offload. And if he goes out there and and does his, and, you know, just plays to his potential, doesn't overplay his hand, does his job, you know, hopefully he makes it hard for himself to be dropped. That's what we want from young Katani Kataga. We want Liam Knight to, to get to the potential that he's always shown. We want Sam Hughes to get more minutes this week to play play that first 20, hopefully, and then come on again and play another 10 or 15 or 20 in the second half. Um, I think that needs to happen for the Bulldogs, and uh, hopefully it does. It's coming all in good time. So that's the changes, I would suggest. Um, that's the, the communication um the performance in the New South Wales Cup and the NRL squad. I think that's what you mean there, Pele. Um I think it's all going to come together eventually. We're we're going to see the contingency plans come in place. We're, we're going to see the players that identify themselves 
as not being um, players that the Canterbury club are going to want to invest in past this year. Um, I think there's a couple of those that probably already exposed themselves in that way. And that sounds sinister, but it, it's it's not. Like, I don't know anything at all. This is just when I watch games, I sort of go, um, you know, when certain players, if they just give off that vibe. And I just think that um, that's that's the way our club still is at the moment. There's that bottleneck in the pathways there's a lot of egos in there and ego is not always a bad thing you've got egos clashing because they all want to be the best they all want to play nrl they all probably think um that they're that they can do it that they've got 200 games of nrl in them if they could just get that chance you know their families are invested in it their communities are invested in it you know they where they grew up there's their old school teachers, you know, these were the best kids at their schools for, for most of them. That's, it's um, it's a real, I, I think it's just, it's, it just creates a really sort of hectic environment and, and can make things, you know, boil over sometimes. And this is at every club, every club. Can you imagine at Penrith when you've got a, play, a kid there against or in Queensland in Brisbane you know you only got to look at Carl Olawapu how talent how talented he is young Carl you know he couldn't crack the Broncos top 30 he was told that he was supposed to be in it and we don't know what happened with that he's come to the dogs but you can just imagine the invest how invested these kids are um and how invested their families are and then when they can't crack it it just it's it's devastating for them. And look, what is it? Two percent of them make it. Two percent make it to the NRL, and only one per, or twelve percent make it, or apparently, and then only one percent actually go on to play hundred games. It's it's a small amount that actually make it. And um, I'd be lying if I said I haven't, you know, said that there's a future immortal, which I like to say highly exaggerated and it turns out that the kid can't doesn't even get to play NRL again you know what I mean happens all the time um yeah so look I think Canterbury Drew Hutchison the drums will be beaten he'd know that a, a good performance this week against the against the Roosters um you know winning shuts everybody up no one said anything about the seven after we beat the titans by 32 nil i still felt we should have won by 50. um no one talked about blake taff being half back after the titans victory no one said a word about it you know we've got to be he's obviously you know when you've played a bit of league growing up and you love league growing up you and you see those traits of a halfback you see someone playing in the line and they can do it and they, they show they can create points from nothing it's like there's a halfback like i get it i just think it's three and four all in good time that's going to be my new catchphrase Pele. all in good time it won't happen overnight but it will happen Denkler, Denkler or whatever it was called so, yeah, I think New South Wales Cup, going back to them, um, once all those forwards that they've got rotating at the moment get those miles in their legs, you're hoping a fit Tedavano, you're hoping for a fit Patolo, um, a fit Katoga, um, a fit Kawasa. When these players then start filtering in to NRL, like they're just starting to now, and going back and forth, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna give that spark. They're gonna give that. They're gonna bend the line when they get there. They're gonna set things up for that, for that really talented back line in our New South Wales Cup side to do what they do. And at the moment, those kids, if they, they've just got to communicate with each other um, in defence, because that seems to be an issue, especially down that right edge. Um, it's like too many points. 
they get things happening there, they're going to build into the season nicely. And they don't have to win the comp. You know, for so many years, I've rest, we've all rested our hopes on winning, winning the junior comps, but it's now at a point where we need to start competing in the NRL. And the only way that's going to happen is if we get more kids into our Reggies, actually fill it full of kids. And these and these players on one and two year contracts for 250 grand are there basically just warming the seat, hopefully giving themselves an opportunity to extend their careers or or go to England or whatever they're going to do. But they're just warming the seats for these kids to sort of push them out of it essentially and let's hope they're able to do it because if we're in a situation where we've got seven or eight juniors in our side in about three or four years um that's when that's when things start to happen and you just got to go back to all of our great sides um whether they won or lost that was a common denominator there was a bunch of juniors that were in the side um and it worked their way through and, and got retained in in the top 25 or the top 20 or the top 30, whatever it was, and and the older sort of stages that were there before before them left. So that's it, brother. All right. So there's 12 of you, 12 of you online. Come say hello if you like. Give us a question. Tell us what you think. Um if you're a player, which I doubt, say hello. Because <laughs> I've got you back. I've always got you back. Um, I'm waiting for my friend Mark to come on. We're giving each other the shits last night. So we'll see if he, if he makes an appearance. I sent him a message at least this time. I think he was pissed off that I didn't go on last night, but I was too buggered. All right. There's, I want to talk about an important stat. So while I like to make a few excuses for the club and the team, let's look at this draw. So, it, so we go back to last week. Are we even looking at that? Yep, we are. Cool. So we played for so in round um, four. Even go to round three. We play Saturday. When did South South play the Friday? Next week we play South on the Friday. So we had a six day turnaround. They had a they had a seven day turnaround. Roosters played Thursday. We're on the Friday. And guess what? We play the Roosters next. They've had a an eight-day turnaround. We've had a seven-day turnaround. Now, these aren't excuses. And you think this would even up, wouldn't you? Round six, we play the Storm on Friday. Guess when they play? This week, on the Thursday. So they get an eight-day turnaround again. We get a seven-day, which is nice. And we're playing night time, which is good. Who do we play after that? You guess it. Newcastle Knights. When do they play? Thursday. We play Friday. So they get an eight-day or a nine-day turnaround and we get an eight-day turnaround into a into a Sunday match. Then I think we get the bye. We do. Who do we play after the bye? We play the West Tigers. Where did they play before, though? They played Saturday. They then need to play us on a Saturday. So they get seven days. We get the bye. So poor Tigers, we get the, we're get we fresher for once. We play on the Friday against the Panthers after playing on the Sunday. Or was it the Saturday? Yeah, so we went from Saturday to Friday. Panthers go from Thursday to Friday. They've got an eight-day turnaround. We've got a six-day turnaround. We then play Canberra on the Friday. Canberra are coming off the bye. Following week, we play the Dragons on the Thursday. This We got the advantage here. Oh, no, they come off the bye. <laughs> so 
So two teams in a row off the bye, play us. Round 13, we play Newcastle on the Friday. They had the bye. Three teams off the bye, Canterbury play. Are you seeing the fucking drift? Are you catching the drift here? Round 13, we play uh, 14 we go to. We play Para on the Monday. Para played Thursday. We played Friday. They get a 10-day turnaround. We get a nine-day one. Let's keep, we then get the bye. Round 16, we play the Roosters on a Saturday. The previous week, they played on the Saturday. So they get seven days into that, play us after the bye. We then play the Sharks on the Friday. A lot of teams having buys at this point because we're getting to origin. The Sharks after their buy. Um, we then play the Warriors on a Saturday. Warriors get a seven-day turnaround. We get an eight-day turnaround. So that's round, set, round 18 before we get the advantage of a team Look, look, that's round 18 before we get our first advantage. Then we have the bye in round 19, and then we play the Cowboys, who also had the bye in round 19. So that's round 20. We play the Cowboys on a Sunday. Round 21, we play the Broncos on a Saturday. Where did they play? They got a seven-day turnaround. We got a six-day turnaround. We then play the Raiders on the Sunday. Previous round, the Raiders played on the Sunday and we played the Saturday. So that's our second game where we get an advantage. We then play the Dragons on a Saturday. The previous round, the Dragons played on the Saturday as well. But we played the Sunday, so they get the advantage into that. Round 24, we play the Dolphins on the Saturday. They played on the Sunday. We So we get the advantage against the Dolphins at Bundaberg, but then we've got to go to the Warriors in New Zealand on the Friday after that. So that's a six-day turnaround for us, and they've got a seven-day. Plus, we're travelling across the ditch. Round 26, we play Friday against the Seagulls, and they they got an eight-day turnaround. We got a seven after coming back from New Zealand. We're the one who need it, but anyway. Round 27, we play the Cowboys on a Saturday. This is the last round, and... They play again. Did he see my drift there? Between now and round 27, every team we play except for two have a longer have a longer rest than we do. And th three of those sides, three of those sides get to have a buy before they play us as well. You can't tell me, you can't tell me that Canterbury, when you see what happens, when you see what happens on that field, get our brother, De Batista. I love it. I'm the most educated Bulldogs expert out there. Keep up the excellent work. Thank you very much, Valerio. I love your name. and. I don't think that at all, um, but I appreciate the lovely words, mate. Um, there's just information out there, bro, and we've all got access to it. I just, I'm an insomniac, and when I should be sleeping, I'm up here looking at stupid shit. I'll be laying there going, I told everyone at, when the draw was released that it was a really good draw for us. How? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. We're playing, we have to play the most, the second, 
So there's one team worse than us that has to play the amount of top eight teams. So we've got to play the most amount of top eight teams twice. And, yeah, as you can see, we also have to accept out of a whole 27 rounds, two teams get a shorter turnaround into a game than us. So in, what, two out of 27, in less than 10% of our matches, we get a longer turnaround than our opposition. It's it's bullshit. It's great that there's no five-day turnarounds. It's good that there's more of our games are in a in a time slot where it's not as hot. But we don't get to recover as long as our oppositions over the season. It's it's bullshit. And the NRL needs there's no why can't they make it more fair for teams? Like, look, if it was 40% of our games, you know, if 60% of our games were were like that, it'd be like, yeah, well, that's a fair rep representation of the fact that we're down the bottom of the ladder. We don't deserve as many prime time games, that sort of stuff. But 10% of our matches, we get a longer turnaround. It's bullshit. And something needs to be fucking said about it. Sorry about all the swear and F-bombs. I watch the Buddy Levels podcast all the time and they, Willie and Willie and Scope, they just drop them so good. My daughter was watching and I think she started dropping F-bombs as well. So maybe I need to be a little bit more, you know, not swear as much. Walk the talk. All right. I'm going to get that off there. Hopefully the cup will get better this weekend at Belmore. All right. So thanks for um, sticking with me while I talked about that with the draw. I'm wondering if, um, you know, I'm going to I'm going to do some posts and, and send it to me, you know, the few mates around to share on their stuff, on their groups and that put it on Instagram and wherever else because it needs to be called out. You know, when you got Sutton, Jared Sutton doing what he did last week, um, with Jared Sutton doing what he did last week and that draw, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll do a big feature on what I just showed you before. Because I think it's um, it's good to get Canterbury fans pissed off at the NRL. Because, you know, the club does its best. I know for a fact the club has worked its ass off to um, better itself amongst the media. You know, when they did feedback from, from fans, a lot of fans, a lot of players, a lot of players' families said that they felt the targeting of the media was one of the real drawbacks of playing for Canterbury, coming to Canterbury, being a Canterbury supporter anywhere in the world, almost. <laughs> Wouldn't matter where you live, someone's calling you a rapist or a terrorist or, you know, or making fun of that sort of shit um, and saying, you know, that we blame the ref and whatever else and that we're a bunch of this and a bunch of that. You know, I don't feel like a victim. I, I, I wear it loud and proud, mate. I don't give a fuck. I'm like, okay, think what you want to think. Now, put your fists up. <laughs> no, none of that. Um, but, yeah, there's something's got to be done, and we need to fucking talk about it because you could see those players, whether we've got the wins or not, whether you like the seven or not, whether you like the one, whether you like – the hook arm, whether you like whoever you dislike, you can't tell me they aren't busting their ass out there and doing the best they can. You can't tell me that the, the players being picked don't want to play for Cameron Serrato because it looks to me like they do. And I watch New South Wales Cup and I still see a lot of kids out there who just want to work hard, right? You know, the egos get exposed. That's going to happen until we weed them all out. But, you know, these sort of things, and that's been happening for a couple of years since Gus got into the back into the club. 
there's a few people of you know you know overstayed their welcome sort of thing whether they are um anyway i won't talk about it anymore um sam hughes sorry about that valerio i think um it's a real baptism of fire to stick Sam Hughes out there against Jared Warrior Hargraves and Lindsay Collins. Um, for me, I, I just think I like his impact off the bench. I felt that the circumstance last week is why he was kept fresh so long because Presto got to have a break. Um, Moran got to have a break that they would, wouldn't have sort of got, and then they got to come on and they came back on. And the guy, they just had that mobility trying to have, and, you know, and probably didn't want to disrupt too many things, but me personally, being a, you know, NRL coach on a million dollars, I would have put Sam Hughes on about five minutes earlier. But when he come on at the 14 minutes, we're coming off our own line, and his first run was fantastic. You know, um, absolutely great first run. Had a couple of other really good good runs. Play the ball was held up a bit on a few of them, but he um, and then he knocked the ball on on his last one, which which was a bit sad. But he's definitely got the talent. I don't buy into this shit about him being the most fittest player, and that the dogs. I've just extended this kid for three years. They want to take their time with him. That's my my perception. They want to build his minutes slowly and, and get him going. We all want it to happen now because we need it. We want a player like Sam Hughes to be the next Jacob Preston from last year and just be hit the ground running. But it's the middle, bro. It's the fucking middle. You know, the middle sit there and get so pissed off at the backs. Um who kept knocking the ball on, you know what I mean? They get so <laughs> – it's just that's where the game of rugby league is won and lost every single week, whether we like it or not. That's it. And our boys, as hard as they're trying, are just outmatched that little bit. Have they closed the gap? I believe they've closed the gap, but time will tell over a full season. That's where you've got to assess it. Can't really assess anything over four rounds. You know, I've put a heap of stats out there about some of our players just to show that, you know, especially in our back line, they're competing and competing hard and competing with the best. But our forwards don't have that same statistical um, representation. Um, yeah, their metres were up last week, but th they were taking three attacking runs in the opposition 20 for 20 minutes. You know that's where forwards get all their meters from the heart, from the from the middle third of the field, and when we when you get into attack, the forwards aren't running the ball off your own off their own line, which is um, yeah, the way most teams are playing it this year. So I don't think Sam Hughes will start. I've just got this feeling they're going to start Knight, but if Knight runs the ball like he did in the first hit up against Souths. I just thought that was a weak run. His second run and third run were good. Or I don't even know if he had a third run. His second run was good. And he plays the ball quick. He does that. But, um, you know, Liam Knight, I like his, the, when he throws passes at the line. He gets hit in the back and he's got a good ball and it seems to go pretty quick. But I, um, I want to see more aggression because you look at him, he looks like an aggressive bloke to me. Um, we, you know, it could be a lot of jokes about uh, young Liam Knight um, and Danica and, and whatnot, but um, yeah, I'd be firing up. I'd, be, I'd have a lot to prove, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, Sam Hughes. If he starts, I think it's good for him. I think it'd be good for his development. Is it the right time this week? Well, who knows? When, it's, you're never going to get a bigger test than Lindsay Collins and Jared Warrior Hargraves. 
you know, to me, they're a, a more formidable opposition than, say, Payne Huss. Huss doesn't really belt people. He just works hard, makes does his work the whole game, you know. I reckon Carrigan hits harder, just to be honest. Um, Jordan Ricky goes hard too. But, um, yeah, when's the perfect time? He's being named. He's got the opportunity. I don't think, you know, I don't think it worries him too much. He'll just do what he's asked and that does what he's told and, and enjoys whatever happens and contributes however he, he gets to contribute. You know, he's definitely, um, from all reports, one of the most, you know, a real gentleman from what I've heard. And um, just like Jacob Preston, another kid is just a real gentleman. There's some good people in our in our team now that you can just tell they're all good, they're good people, and that's why we love them and we're going to get behind them. But when if we keep losing games, you you can't get too attached to them because they're not going to be there that long. <laughs> that's the problem. But Sammy, he's been extended for a few years. Um, is it the right time now? Got nothing to lose, everything to gain. I think if he does start, he can get through that early contact. Or, or can he? will be under a bit of pressure early. Um, be just good to see how fit he is. Whether he can warm into the contact and get going after a few hit ups. Hopefully, we get to get in the grind with him, and he can just do his stuff and 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 play his game and help us advance. You know. We need Max King to back up what he did last week. What Max King did last week, if he does that every week for us, and I know, and he is pretty consistent, but that to me is that that's the upper echelon of his performance. If he can maintain that upper echelon week in, week out, he's on the verge of being, you know, picked in rep sides, in my opinion. Some may laugh at that, but I think, that's the type of consistent hard worker. He, look, he can come on off the bench and, and be a good second hit up man. Um, he can get an offload away. He was fantastic last week. I think Josh Curran will put himself in the picture as a New South Wales Origin player. Just does not stop. But he needs a platform as well. So for me, if we've got in the future, I'm really hoping you know that these players like Jack Todd and Sam Hughes are there with Max King and they're still there and, and you got and Fafida comes off the bench or if it's Litoy Hopoy or whoever it is, young Seve makes makes the grade. You know, so many young kids coming through. If these guys are, are getting to that next level and they're in the conversation for origin, the dogs are gonna go well. The back line that we've got now and the back line we're gonna have in two or three years time. We'll just hum and hum and hum if those boys can be in the picture for origin discussion. And it's funny, we talked about um, Benji Marshall talked about uh, Stefano or Ticamano. Now, I'd love to, I'd give a left nut for him to come to Canterbury because, you know, he looks like someone who just keeps developing. Um, but still, it's it's still up in the air whether he's going to get, maintain that level or go up to the next level. But he's been slowly building, been in the New South Wales academies, got his chance in Origin, but then wasn't picked again. Uh, was it game three or game two? I don't know when he was picked. Um, I think he was picked game two. But, you know, Benji talks about him being in Origin form and, He's played well the last two weeks. There's no doubt about it. Um, I'd love for him to be able to come to Canterbury. We'll have money to make one big signing, I think, for next year. And hopefully someone like him. But we'll see. And that's no disrespect to anyone in the club. All right, guys, there's not too much chat coming through. We've been going for nearly an hour. Um, I think... To beat the Roosters this week, we need to obviously defend well again. There's no doubt. Um, they're going to have to take some risks. But 
they just need to do what they've been doing, try and build pressure, try and win that ruck and, and frustrate the, the Roosters. I think I think we have the game plan to frustrate them for sure. Um, the way that, that we're running up in, a, in attack, they'll be looking for ways to – I think they're just going to try and break us through the middle and then get us on the edges late, which is, seems to be a pretty basic game plan. But that's it's it's all about keeping it simple. Keep it bloody simple, stupid. Um, and that's what they're going to try and do, do to us, and that's what we've got to do to them. We've got the speed there. Look, um, for me, for us to win this match, the kick out and current need to be able to, and Marnie, need to be able to shut down their kicking game from dummy half. And that's the Bulldogs' way. You've got to remember the, the likes of Simon Gillies, Stephen Price. You know, back in the day, these players would just rush out and get things shut down. Um, and whoever's there makes it happen. None of this, you know, I'm too tired business. But smart halves and good halves in those conditions are also going to anticipate what's coming and you'll see some 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 little steps and they'll actually run it when they look like they're going to kick. I can see that happening um, more and more. As with the block and rule happening, we're seeing halves are actually harder to, are easier to get to um, if, if the kick chase is right and the kick from Mark is good, we have to slow down that play the ball without giving penalties. The fact it's wet, that there'll, there'll be an allowance for that. Yeah, so I, I think that forecast is going to be, it's going to be wet, definitely going to be wet. And and I think that is going to mean that um, we've, we've got a chance there. We've got a real chance in that sort of weather with a pretty mobile pack um, and a fast side to be able to, you know, weigh them down. They've got some big, powerful boys in that team. And I think in the wet, it's going to slow them down. And, and that might frustrate them. So they'll be looking for the likes of Keary and Walker and especially Tedesco to do that that lot because they're the more light-footed types. Victor Radley's not huge, good off his feet. They'll expect Brandon Smith to get out of dummy half. There'll be a lot of that stuff through the middle. But they'll be looking to expose us that way. And um, But, you know, there's some big boys out wide and, we've, you know, we've got the likes of Wilson and Tracy and Taft. They, you, you think they're going to get across the ground a little bit quicker than, than the opposition? You know, Critter's pretty big and lanky. Um, Perez is a bit like that as well. So yeah, it's sort of – it's an intriguing contest. They've, if you line up every position, they've got us on nearly every position, if you're being a fair judge, um, on what they've achieved and what they've done. But I don't know. Um We've been in these games against the Roosters in recent years. There's a lot on the line. I think I think the dogs are going to be desperate to to win, and um, and whatever happens, um, I'm expecting a close game. I am expecting a close game, especially in the wet. But I'm also fearful of that energy expenditure that we've had. A bunch of new people coming in nerves that sort of shit a lot to play for one and three roosters only two and two so they they want to get their season properly started against a team that they should beat there's just lots of things that stack in their favor and if you're a betting man you just can't bet on the dogs if you're a betting person it's just um it's yeah just the way it is G'day, Peter. A warning would be good next time. Anyway, I made it here. Oh. <laughs> no worries, brother. I'm going to show you something, though. Because I'm one of those people. 
728. I said, evening, gents. I'm going live in a minute. But anyway. Sorry, bro. Um, I made it here. Last three years has been a missable 11 points separating them. Last year, Roosters kicking a field goal to feel the match 25-24. Yeah, mate. Um, 100% right, my friend. I think... Um, It's no matter what's been happening, we were one and seven and beat them 16-12. Um, those scenes of Trent Barrett jumping on the sideline. And then we had two close losses to the Raiders and the Knights and he was gone. Um, never forget that. Last year we should have won. It was a, I remember Marnie getting that great try. Um, we're up 12-0. We're all over them. I think a couple of little things went against us. The next minute, they were edging it back. Then we were edging in front again. They kept pulling it back, and then they got us late. And that really, really sucked, mate. But um, you've definitely got your uh, – you've definitely done that right. Um, the wet – you did your post on the weather, on the all things Bulldogs. And, yeah, it, it gives us – a a much better chance. It, they've got some, as I was just saying, some big, big bodies. We've got a lot of lighter frame people in our team and uh, that could be an advantage for us getting across the park if it is a bog fest. It could be a slosh fest and if we win, there'll definitely be a slosh fest, mate. Um, you'll have to get the guitar out and say hello. Agree we need a hearted prop meter eater. 100%. Stefano has got aggressive style. Good point, Dave. That's what I've liked about West finally. You know, if if Luke Brooks had his forwards playing the, with the aggression that they've shown in the last two weeks, you know, I, I watched that trial against St. George, uh, I think it was, and they just looked... It's like no one put their body on the line. They don't down 80 nil after a few minutes. Like the softest tries I'd ever seen. Even softer than some of Canterbury's worst. Um and and it wasn't looking good for West at all. Um, but that aggression like Clemmer, one of his first hits was massive. Um and I haven't seen that a lot from the Clem. In a long time, he's been more measured in his in his approach to things. Always fires up against the dogs, but he just hasn't been that animal that he used to be for us. But I've st I've seen the animal reemerge, and that's good for Wes. And that young fellow who come on, um, one of the brothers, Finu, he 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 wants to rip and tear like nothing else. And Oitika Manu, yeah, aggression. Then you got Bateman, and on the other side, Isaiah Papali, who is a very, very good player. And you know, last year, or even though you come to a team and you're on an, when you're on an edge, you're not going to do as many hit up. Sorry, when you're on an edge going to a, a team struggling, you don't do as many hit ups because you don't have the possession and you're on the back foot. It's just a simple fact. So his meters were only down about six meters a game. So to me, he was, and he was working hard. He was missing more tackles, but that's natural when you're in a team like that. He's a very good player. John Bateman, a bit John Bateman, is annoying as fuck. Uh, I don't know how this man performs at the top level, but he's a winner. He's just a good footballer. Just plays hard, gets under the opposition's skin. He's just always there. He's experienced. In his mind, um, and I, you know, he's a tough player, and West are going to do well. It's that aggression, right? Um, easy to pick them. Go for your ladder predictor and go. Oh, West lose here, West lose there. If you actually look at their forward pack, it's a fucking good pack. Um, and every time we, every single. Every single Canterbury fan said that we were light on in the forwards. And we've been impressed by their effort. But four rounds in, 
Let's get rid of the spawn and the bats. Anyway, I get it. It's frustrating being a dog's fan. And we all enjoy our footy the same way. Anyway, guys, I've been going too long. But lucky I went long this week, Pete. Or you wouldn't have got to jump on. I mean, I've been listening to you that I need to shorten it up, mate. Anyway, I was just looking through Facebook and someone said, why can't they see the post? <laughs> Pete, you know you're my measuring stick, bro. Look at that bloody flatty, eh? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, Pete. You need to contact William Powerfish, mate, with that. That's that's nearly the world's biggest flatty. That's at least a three or four metre. It's fucking brilliant. Regan Campbell Gillard on his last year. Is he? Let's have a look at that, Dave. Let's keep this, this thing going. Let's go to zero tackle. They tend to have a good thing happening. So this is where I'll just I'll bring it up in a moment. Let's go to the teams. The Eels. Current squad. Let's go and share this with everybody. No meltdowns if we get pumped this week. I only, I only have a meltdown if we um if we um, I think everyone's expecting us to get pumped. Um, I only have a meltdown if we should win and we lose, and it's the ref's fault. All right, sorry, I'm getting old. Let's look at the Parramatta Eels here, shall we? Regan Campbell Gillard, it's 750,000 a season. His last season's 2025. So, November this year, we can make a play for Regan Campbell Gillard. Well, people know that Phil Gould. Sign him up on a big deal, and he actually uh, got let go early and was taken on by the um, the Eels. I tell you what, let's have a look through the Eels while we're at it. They've signed a lot of players up till twenty five. I don't mind that Brendan Hands; he's a good young hooker. Jermaine Hopgood's going to be worth double or triple. I think he's only on 150 grand. Surely he'd want he'd want to get more money. So see, look, players like Markahisi, Markatoa are going to be available for the for next year. Um, Offer Heki Ogden, he they could have got rid of him this year, but they they've kept him for the year. Um. Yeah, there's not much happening there, really, in their forward pack. I can't see them letting go of um, any of their forwards unless they can get a better one into their team. Marumu Greg just um, re-signed. Matt Dory's a good player, good one to have in your club. Just his knees are fucked. Joe Offerhand Galway, you know, Blues inside, that was his best game that I've seen him play since he left the Broncos. He, he, like against us, he, we handled him with ease, but um, he had a real dig against the Tigers on the weekend. I thought someone actually said in the Bulldogs, one of the Bulldogs groups, that he had signed, was coming to the Bulldogs, but he, it turned out the mail was wrong. He went to the Eels. So I suppose we could look at some other teams. Is there any other? They have a very expensive spine. Good to note that, Pete. And, and this is what I'm going to I'm going to go on a tangent here now, Pete. Thanks for that. They have a very expensive spine. All the good sides are spending three point five million plus on their spine. So they've got two hookers at the moment, which probably cost what Reed Marnie costs uh, together. 
they're not paying more than 250 300 for their two hookers that they got in their system he has it on 600 which isn't too bad i think a good hooker is worth their weight in gold um it's where it all starts um jeremy marshall king took a pay cut to go to the dolphins but now he's doubled what he was on so he's on about 350 400 um Went there for 200 earned his money, got an immediate upgrade. He was on 250 uh, 350 at the Bulldogs, Jeremy Marshall King. That's what I mean. We signed him on 350 as a half before he'd done anything. Um, but, yeah, most of the good sides have that massive expensive spine. Taft's 250 Hutchison's 250 Sexton's 300 Now. Yeah. That's on the reported. They could all be on an extra 50 grand each. Thomas McKayley, that's now that's one. He's at the Cowboys. And the Cowboys fans are filthy that he hasn't started NRL because he had a really good trial series. He was outstanding in the trials, but that's typical fan behavior, isn't it? I think McKayley's one I'd definitely entertain. If we can't get anyone, He's going to provide us that impact, and maybe he can do it. We do have to see, though, how does Poasa develop? How does Saluka Fafita develop? Now, he's coming off an ACL, so he needs – it doesn't matter what happens. He's, if he's ready by round 12, I don't believe he's going to be properly ready until round 10 next year, based on what I've seen from ACL injuries, especially for players that – you know, haven't really achieved their their potential. It's, it's a really, but who knows, advances in technology and whatever else. Um, Yeah, I like Thomas, though. I love what he did in the trials, and I understand why the Cowboys fans were saying he should play. Um, Let's get another... Sorry, there we go. Well, look at the sharks. So look, let's look at their forward pack. So Dale Finucan in twenty twenty five, his salary goes down to three hundred k. So you'd expect that's his final season. They pick up Adam Fanua Blake on an even million bucks a year from next year. They've extended, they just extended Brad, Braden Hamion Uelo, who I, you'd think would be on close to half a million dollars, being a 100 game in a real prop, who's should have played 150, but he's been injury prone. Tukahahu Tapahua, they just put him on to 25 as well, and he's a big boy. And God, he can go. Thomas Hazelton, the club can choose to keep him next year or they can let him go. You think if he got a bigger offer to go somewhere, they'd probably let him go. Royce Hunt got extended to the end of next year as well. Um, a really good player, as we know, continues to have little injuries. I think he's a Bulldogs junior. I could be right or wrong. I don't know. Oregon Kafusi has a manager's option, so his manager can decide. I don't get the difference between a player option and a manager option. That's That seems a bit weird to me, but anyway. If someone knows what that means, tell me. They've just extended Toby Rudolph, who was on 550K. Has he signed for more or less? You think he signed for the same or more? Surely. How do they keep all these forwards? And then they've got Teague Wilton. Jack Williams is one that's off. But what, is Jack playing in the middle? Don't think so. Um, Talakai is extended long time. He could end up in the forwards. I think Oregon Kafusi is one that we could look at. 114 kilogram prop at six foot two. He's only 24. 
has a very he's a skillful player has a very good um offload in him to me he's a player i would look at deeply um i started off saying hamlin ULA and rudolph and whoever else royce hunt i've said them all i i think the sharks props when they're all fit and healthy they're a top four team with but the problem is getting them all in the paddock at the same time because they seem to be injury prone which means the likes of a tom hazelton and oregon Capusi are going to show how good they are for the sharks this year because they've they've got the balance in their squad used to watch nico playing touch as a kid now a mil on a million bucks Fuck, i'm getting old <laughs> he is a 1.1 million dollars this this long-haired surfer boy, he's he's out there playing touch footy. They can't get a hand on him. You're out there thinking, oh, I could probably probably get him. Um, <laughs> and now I'm 64. <laughs> yeah, Hung was a doggy once. I reckon we call him Royce Hung, Dave. Roycey Hung. I bet you he is hung too. <laughs> I, I, I should have a drink or something. I feel like having a drink. And I, don't, I never feel like having a drink. Um, look at this. I've had this baby since... Since I left news school. And it's already aged for 10 years or some shit. 45% alcohol. Love it. Anyway, love a good fucking bourbon. Don't we, Pete? But yeah, I don't drink much. I don't I don't drink at all. <laughs> You agree with Oregon, Dave? We well, should. Because, um, <laughs> I don't know. I think I need to actually have a drink. I really do. It might balance me out. I'm a bit, feeling a bit weird today. We're down to seven, seven viewers. Well, I never thought I'd ever get one. So that's a 700% improvement. So stay, stay tuned, people. It's all happening here. Um, yeah, Oregon Confuci, I think he's someone that needs we need to target him. Unfortunately, the Dragons have a war chest. Don't they love to say that word, war chest? What's war chest mean? Oh, Zach Lomax is on 800 grand and he's not going to be there. Does that mean they're not going to resign some players? They've got a war chest. Does that mean they're free of paying players to play elsewhere? Does that mean they get their full money back for Jade and Sullivan? Um, what is it? You know, is Jade and Sewer going to leave? Who knows? But I reckon Oregon Kafusi would be a good Bulldogs player. <laughs> there you go, mate. You're a good bloke, Dave. And thanks, you've um, I've enjoyed what you've provided tonight too, mate. All of you, Valerio, Pele, Paulie, come on for a bit. I'm still waiting. I've been hanging out for, for Big Mark to come on for the O'Connell, but yeah, it is a nice drop, mate. I'm afraid to drink it though. Jack Daniels single barrel select. Hand selected. So when I was working with those bastards at News Corp, a lot of good people there, though. That's what they gave me when I left. So I'll treasure that and make sure I give it to them at every opportunity. <laughs> I should have stayed, honestly. I should have stayed. <sighs> anyway. You, live, you win some, you lose some. 
But, yeah, I don't know who else to go for. I wouldn't be going for a rock off a Hickey Ogden. I think you need one. As I said previously, 11 points a dip over three years. We can do this. 100% Petey. 100% mate. I think the weather's helping us. Maybe things are lining up. We get a win over them. You know. I think we're going to beat one of these two teams in the next two weeks. That's my feeling. I hope I'm right. And, you know, hopefully we'll beat both of them because that would be fantastic. That's that's what we just need it, mate. Like, we just need it. The fan base just need it. They need those boys to get the fucking win in the next couple of weeks. The players need a break from, from the the vitriol, the, the, oh, the crap being said about them. It needs to galvanise them. It needs to toughen them up, you know, and, yeah, that's it, Dave. Cashed up war chest. Look, I know I know for a fact Cameron Serrato is in this, like, he, he's a, obviously a great person and human being, but he's, I think he's got a real mean streak in him and, you know, the way those boys have been out, they haven't just been going out there and, and trying their absolute hardest this year. I've seen a lot of niggle in their play. I've seen a lot of, a lot of like, resentment in their face for the opposition. That they really, um, but they've kept it clean at the same time. There hasn't, there's, yeah, I've just seen it. I think there's some... The Bulldogs have got a bit of a chip on their shoulder out there at the moment, and I want to see that continue. Um, people are talking about Big Nelson. Big Nelson's not leaving the storm, mate. Just just have to let everyone know. We need to shut the windows up like me. Mate, you're the least of the problems, mate. You just say what you think. That's That's fine. It's it's the innuendo. You don't you don't go out there and say there's innuendo. That's that's what pisses me off, and that's where I fire up. It's when people sit there and make up their own mind about what's going on, and assume it's all bad because because we don't win the NRL match. You know, when quite clearly we're fucking winning everything in the juniors again. Quite clearly, there's a bunch of seat bench warmers and seat warmers in in position who know how to set the right standards at training, know how to get picked into a top 17 because they do what they're told. They don't make excuses. That's that's the reason that Drew Hutchison's number seven because he when he gets told he needs to go and communicate, well, no one has to tell him to communicate in defence because he's doing it. You know, is the, is it, are they listening to him in attack, though? Are they, are they fall, is he too slow? I don't know, but... Obviously, he's communicating in defence, whereas obviously there's some kids and people that aren't in first grade right now that want to be there but aren't doing what they're told or, or focusing on what they need to focus on. And once they do that, they, they'll get the position because they've got the talent. And that's what our team wants to do. That's what our club wants to do is to fill our side full of juniors, not full of ringings. The ringings are there to set a standard for the juniors to fucking play. But we're four rounds in, as we say. We won't get a proper scope on the dogs until round eight, round nine, and that's probably on every team in the comp, you know. But anyway, we can all say, though, Penrith are going to be very hard to beat. We could use some luck just quietly. Definitely more mongrel this year, yep. Yeah, oh, mate. Serrato, I've always had an issue with his bench and with his rotations, and I've said that. I don't harp on about it, but I've said it, questioned it. And there's others who felt the same way, you know what I mean? But one thing I've liked about Cameron Serrato is his the way he's approached the, the media this year, 
when we lose, a lot of people just turn their their ears off and all they hear is excuses or Cameron being upbeat and positive. But what I I've heard is that he has basically told the NRL, um, yeah, you fuck us over all the time. You just did it last year, you're doing it, still doing it this year. The difference between last year and this year, though, the difference between the then and the now is that my boys actually deserve some of the luck. They deserve some of the – they've earned it. They've competed. They've been out there. They've, they've dominated parts of the play. They've looked like the better team at certain points in games, and that was against the, the Eels and the Sharks, teams the Tigers beat, just to get the haters happy. Um, yeah, I've said all that, Pete, too. Seventh in defence, 14th or 15th in attack. And we're not getting thrashed. Thrashed. No, we're not. 100% we're not. And Serato knows that. He can see his teams out there doing it. They're putting themselves in the position. Look, I said this earlier and I'll say it again. I think it's a little bit overstated, the position you know, how we actually got into the positions on the field against Souths. We got piggybacked up the whole game. And if you watch the um, South Sydney coach, he used those exact words. But nine of the 11 penalties were justified. Two of them I thought were ridiculous. Like Sutton had no reason to call a penalty on the South Sydney side. He called a flop on um, Dean Hawkins, which was bullshit. He basically helped make the tackle and then just helped finish it off. It was never going to be a quick play of the ball anyway. Like, it was just an absolute bullshit penalty, which Sutton likes to do, um, and advance us up the field. So we didn't really have to earn it too much. So I think there was a little bit in, even from our coach, when I was just talking about him positively, I think he overstated that a little bit. Um, we got gifted field position. Burton did some long kicks. Hutchison did a couple of good kicks as well. This time, they tur Marnie turned them around again. So the kicking was good. I felt could have been a little bit better. In, in it. We could have done some more attacking kicks. Um, they did a few for Crichton, and he, he's going to get one soon. But, um, yeah, I just think it was a bit overstated. But finishing what I was saying before, I just like the way Cameron is – essentially told the NRL, you're fucking screwing us. But he does it in a way which is not going to cost the club 10 or 20,000 bucks, um, which I don't mind. Yeah, I've talked about it a lot already, Pete. So we should have had it. But for me, I ain't going to talk about it. Tass gets sent off for 10. The Fox doesn't get knocked out. And probably scores, to be honest, because they were humming with that left that left edge. They did it a few times. They could have done it again. They could have done it numerous times. Then they swap Perez and Crichton and bring Salmon into the centres. Or, as I said, marched upfield with penalties, camped on their line. They're not exerting too much defence. We're throwing it side to side. Forwards are having three hit ups. One forward's getting a good play, the ball. The rest are getting a shit one. Marnie's crabbing out to the left. Hutchison's, you know, trying to do something. Taft's like, give me the ball. And they're like, who are you? <laughs> Where, what team did you come from again? Where did you come from? You know, it's like, who are we? Well, that's what you get, right? Like, They'll know each other a lot better next year if they're still in the club. Anyway, guys, it's been an hour and a half. Thanks for everyone who's tuned in. Pete, I'm glad you got on and said hello, mate. Um, I did send a message to the to the little group chat, um, and I think I sent you one as well. Maybe I didn't mention that though. I sent about ten of them out. And I did, and I was hoping young Mark O'Connell would have come on and and fired it up a bit but anyway great chat dave um i don't know if you're on all things bulldogs facebook group if you are say hello 
um, introduce yourself, send us a message anytime you want, mate. Um, and oh, last thing, guys, I am going to do a redraw on the um, on the uh, what do I call it? Um, cheers, brother. Um, I will be doing the license plate draw because um, for the people, there was like 15 people or something. No, they were, sorry, there was one person who got the closest and then there was about five people who were equal second place. Well, the person who won, I uh, haven't heard from him for a while. So I, I think he said he didn't want to win. If he wins, give it to someone else or something, but he hasn't messaged me. So we've got to, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still give that out, but I have packed it away. I'll be moving house next Wednesday and setting up a new studio. So I'm not sure if I'll do a podcast like this. I'll probably do one from the phone while I'm driving around or something. Anyway, talk soon, guys. Have a good night. Go the bloody dogs. I can't wait for Friday night. We're going to give it to them, Pete. And hopefully there'll be a big slosh fest afterwards celebrating the win with doggy hoo, doggy hoo-ha. See you guys.